Here is a special news report. A cloud of deadly chlorine gas is leaking from a derailed tanker car west of Toronto. And there's enormous amount of flame coming, and nobody there, just oh, was running. We're going to be blowing up. Well, I was in my first year as mayor of Mississauga, and that night I was in bed. My uh, son woke me up, and he said, I think the city hall is blown up. The explosion could be felt all the way to downtown Toronto, 16 kilometers away. And then the next thing, the fire chief called me and said, Madam Mayor, we have a major derailment at Mavis Road. Lying on the track, surrounded by propane-fed flames, was a tanker filled with 90 tons of liquid chlorine, the chemical used in swimming pools and bleaches, and the deadly gas that killed thousands in World War I. I had the night shift that night in the emergency department. The blasts were so loud, the concussions were causing the cars in the driveway in front of the emergency department to shake back and forth. This triggered a whole protocol, and in all my years in Mississauga Hospital, this is the only time I can remember that this, this protocol was ever triggered. Mississauga was a ghost town, like something out of a movie. 240,000 residents had been evacuated from their homes. And the CPR and the Red Cross and our Mississauga Transit are at present working on providing accommodation for these people. I think the one that bothered me the most was the evacuation of the Mississauga Hospital. That was the biggest decision. I had to go out to say to the press, Mississauga is closed down. We, uh, we can't operate. More than 100 patients from Mississauga General, Queensway, and Oakville Trafalgar hospitals were relocated in other hospitals. Ambulances from as far as Kingston and the Niagara Peninsula helped in the operation. Some patients were still attached to intravenous tubes. A baby, only two and a half hours old, was among those transferred. And we were expecting dozens and dozens and dozens of mass, mass casualties. And we were all standing around waiting for this to happen. We had one patient all night long, and it was a reporter. You know, it was pretty dark, and I didn't see the ditch beside the railway track. So I went down, landed, and snapped my foot off. It was very painful, and I was lying in the ditch for quite a while. It was unsafe for first responders to come in because the theory at the time, which I wasn't aware of, was there was poison gas in the vicinity. I believe it was a miracle. Nobody lost their lives, and uh, no animals died because of lack of care, and cetera. And uh, there was no looting, which was another big thing. How lucky is that, right? I mean, that, that no one got hurt. Just some doofus trying to get a shot, you know? The whole thing was amazing, uh, how smoothly it went, and how this whole thing that we practiced for years and years and years, but never used, and everybody who should have been there came, plus extra people came. There are just so many people who just came down to volunteer to help. And so the derailment of CP Rail's Freight Train 54 and the Mississauga evacuation is now history. People will talk about it for years. It'll be remembered as possibly being the closest thing to a killer disaster in the history of this province.